Hello, good evening everybody. Um so welcome to another video um, released on this channel. So um this video is specifically for um students of um the University of Lagos. Um year one students that um want to um that'll be taking on FSC one one three that should be intro introduction to computer science. So the Department of Computer Science have made some practice um, practice questions available for you to use to get yourself prepared for the exams. So this is this is a video. This video is meant to be a study material for you to navigate the questions at the back of the book. So well, I, I'm a student like you. <laughs> Although I'm in my finals, but I'm a student like you. So please, my answers they may not be correct, but um, I'm willing to share my knowledge with you. Just as um, I'll be glad for you to share yours with me to through the comment section if um you feel like any of my answers are wrong or something. All of us are just we are all we are going to be learning from each other. So um, before I start, I would like to let us know that there are some other videos that i've created before now specifically for this course so this is my youtube channel here so as you can see if you come under videos we have a couple of videos that i've created for visual basic so you can come here check them out so um the videos are very helpful so i think i put everything in a playlist so this is the playlist over here so you can see data types in vb get out so um data types in vb um variables whatsoever then i did a bit of um gui programming as well so um i think a direct link you can use to get to that particular playlist is um bit.ly slash um fsc i think it's vb um, I can't remember the special link I gave to it. I'll I'll put it in the um just check the of uh, the description of this video below. You see a direct link to get you to this particular playlist. So at least you can get yourself um equipped with this one as well. So um without wasting any more of our time, let's get into it. So also I'd like to let us know that um I'll be partitioning this video into three. So, because um, we have a, the, a group of um, three questions at the back of the textbook, so those three questions, uh, the, those three groups, I'll be making a video for each one of them. Then, also the calculation parts, I want to take my time to explain the calculation parts, so I'll do a separate video for the calculation parts, so um, these videos won't be long unnecessarily. And also, please, this is very important. Um, when going into your exam, or while going into your exam, make sure you go with a calculator. You might not have time to solve all those calculations by hand. It's very important to get a calculator. Go to your exam with your calculator and make sure you are solving all those things with your calculator. If you try to do them by hand, you might be at a disadvantage, trust me. So let's go into what we have to do today. And um, good luck to me, the tutor, and you, my students. <laughs> So these questions are extracts from the back of the textbook. So you can get all these questions there. Like I said, th so this video will be for the first 120 um, questions. So let's get started. An intranet uses um, internet technology within the boundaries of the firm. So this is the answer over here. So the second one, the .net domain is used for um, educational institu institutions. They use .edu. So Unilag, for example, they use Unilag or Edu or NG. So Internet Organization, International Organization. I think this is .dot org. .dot um, org as well. This should be .dot net. This should be the answer D over here. So um, for stock control processing, the answer is batch processing. For stock control, what you use um, is batch processing. The reason why you use batch processing for this kind of um, for this kind of task is because you have the same kind of task you want to do over and over again, so you can just partition them into batches. Then you run um, one batch at a time, so it makes um, the, the, that is where you can actually attain efficiency. So um, for multi processing for this number four, I'll take time sharing. 
So multiprocessing is best for time sharing. So if you have um, multiple things to work on, partition the time, then each um, task, um, uh, the allocated time. So it will be like a turn by turn something. But this might survive here, time sharing. So um, for the fifth one, what type of computer is suitable for batch processing? Now, um, batch processing um, normally used to be heavy on CPU, like the RAM of the computer you are going to be needing to do correct batch processing. Normally, it's a very, very powerful computer. So I'll go with mainframes. I'll go with uh, mainframes. So number six, let me zoom into this thing. So um, the World Wide Web was invented by Tim Burns Lee. Yes. So, which of this is a mail transfer protocol? Um, it is SMTP. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So, UML, no. XML, no. XTML, no. HTML, far from it. So, the answer is SMTP. So, the transfer of data from a local computer to a remote computer um, is what you call uploading. Is what you call uploading. So, downloading is when you are transferring data from a remote computer to a local computer but for this the answer is uploading so number nine which of this is true about a web browser so a, re a web browser can send and receive emails a web browser can read messages from news groups a web browser can browse the web now um one thing i want us to know is that this book um when the uh, it was written a long time ago so the answers that were correct then may, may not be correct now, but normally, um, this is the uh, these are some of the questions they will be testing you based on. So whatever they choose, then is what we are still going to go with. So send and receive emails. A web browser is not what is sending the email. If, for example, you have an email client like Google, Yahoo, or whatsoever, this is what me I would do. But if you have any contrary opinion, please, um, the comment section is open. So. Um, a web browser is not what is sending or receiving the email. You understand? What is sending and receiving the email is your email client. For example, Gmail, um, Yahoo Mail, um, a lot of them, a lot of them. But in this case now, they are telling us that a web browser sends and receives emails. For this case, we are correct. <laughs> but in its real sense, I don't think it is. So then it reads messages from news groups that one is correct so see browse the web correct so um the answer that they might want you to choose will be all of the above you understand but normally the answer is supposed to be b and c but since b and c are correct obviously <laughs> every other one is correct so just you choose all of the above in the, inter in the um, exam please so dash is an online discussion group that does not send direct email to members um, like I said, this book was written a long time ago, so all these ones, nobody uses all these anymore, but actually the answer is Usenet. The answer is Usenet. So, um, which of these is a meta search engine? Um, I think a meta search engine is a search engine sitting on, on top of another one. So, number 11... I think I'll go with Docpile. Yeah, 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 Docpile. This should be the answer. 11. It should be Docpile. So, um, 12. A self-contained program that affects computers over a network. A self-contained program that affects computers over a network. The answer is warm. The answer is warm. So, the answer is warm. Uh, normally, you might be compelled to choose virus, but at least the answer is one. So, that is a language for describing web pages, HTML, please. HTTP is a protocol for accessing web pages, but this is a language with which you um, describe web pages, with which you define the elements in a web page, HTML. So, number 14, which of these is not a search engine? Um, Yahoo is a search engine, Google is a search engine, Bing is a search engine, Ask is also a search engine, but Safari is a web browser, so Safari is the answer here because it's not a search engine. So number 15, a personal article posted on the web for public access, you call it a blog, you call it a blog. So the primary purpose of the internet 
is to facilitate information sharing that is the primary purpose of the internet to facilitate information sharing um, when the internet was first invented i think it was during the time of war when um, encrypted messages had to be sent um, over enemy lines um, undetected or something I, I can't really remember the story per se but they had to send information to the other side and uh, it had to be like it had to be go undetected that was how the internet started basically so the primary aim of the internet basically is to facilitate information sharing so number 17 um an underlined word on a web page is actually a an hyperlink yes it's an hyperlink that's what you call it an underlined word on a web page is called a hyperlink so another name for url is um web address web address another name for url is a web address so this is the calculation normally um this is supposed to be a binary so this should be 0 0.1011 um subscript 2 to show that it is in base 2 no it shouldn't be like this but I'll, I'll be answering questions like this in another video entirely so but normally in the exam please make sure you are using your calculators for this make sure you're using your calculator so number 20 number 20 interconnectivity between independent and semi-independent computers is referred to as a, a stamped network stamped network like interconnectivity between dependent and semi-independent computers you call it a network so for the number 21 it's a calculation question i'll do it in another video entirely so which of the following can be used to find information on the web search engine express okay so you have questions like this one where you have some options and just all these um all these ones over here okay um so number 23 a set of commands used to create web documents so this number 23 the answer would be html so number 24 the answer would be a software that allows you to access the web obviously a web browser so for number 25 number 25 a collection of websites that can be accessed by using hypertext interface i'll go with www a collection of websites so worldwide web uh, worldwide web uh, basically so Used to transfer files from host to host. File transfer protocol, FTP. File transfer protocol. So FTP is basically the protocol with which um you transfer files over the internet. Though a, a protocol is basically a set of rules you follow to do something. So um, number twenty-seven allows remote computer, remote login to another computer um remote login to another computer the answer should be telnet yes telnet telnet so um dash processing requires an operating system transaction application and the backup for this number 28 i'll choose the batch processing i'll choose the batch processing you need an operating system the transaction application and you also need the backups as well <coughs> sorry for the 29, the extra bit of the ASCII code is referred to as parity. Parity, this is the answer. Parity. So, um, number 30 to 34, you have another set of questions like um, the ones we just answered. So, 30 to 34. Okay, a device that connects incompatible networks. Um, gateway, yes, gateway. Incompatible networks. You use the gateway to link them together, to connect them together. For number 31, the answer is um, a device that helps boost analog signals. You call, you call it a repeater. A repeater is used to repeat the signals, like boost the signals. So for number 32, um, a device that converts electrical signals into analog form, transmittable on a phone line, Number 32, I think the answer should be a modem. Yes, yes, a modem. A device that converts electrical signals into analog form transmittable on a phone line. The answer is a modem. So, number 33, 
So, number 33. Um, number 33, a device that forms an interface bet um, between two similar local area networks, which is a LAN. So, number 33, the answer should be a bridge. Yes, a bridge. Stands and the interface between two similar local area networks. So, for number 34, a device that sends data through compatible protocol path. Number 34 should be a router, yes, a router. Number 34 should be a router. So, um, we continue. Which of these is uh, required for security on a network? So, physical security, personal identification, password. Me, I choose all of the above. I choose all of the above. So, what is the result of this and this? Normally, they didn't specify the base, but this is going to be um, binary, most likely. But, well, um, you just have to know that when you, if, if you encounter something like that, you have to treat it as binary. So, but I'm not going to be answering this question here. Yeah. I'm not going to. So, a device that responds to requests um, is requested to, as a server, yes. Number 37. Number 37 is a server. A response to request. A device that launches the request is called the client. So I don't know what service I is. <laughs> and I don't know what responder is. This, this is sounding. F okay, responder. Okay, this E. Okay, the typing error. Okay, so the ones complement of this. Normally you turn all the ones to zeros and all the zeros to ones. That should be the ones complement. So. Um, which of these operating systems is owned by Google? Android is the answer. Windows is owned by Microsoft. Um, Mac is owned by Google. Um, Apple. Unix. Unix. I know that Linux is open source. I can't. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know the answer is um, Android actually. Number thirty nine. I know the answer is Android. So for number forty. Um, which of the following is not a social network in social networking application? Google Plus as at what year are we in? Twenty twenty two. As at twenty twenty two, Google Plus um, does not exist anymore. They've discontinued it. So, but you choose none of the above. So that's the answer. <laughs> you choose none of the above. So number forty one, a computer system can be described as um, um, an electronic device. Um, a device for storing and processing data, a device that works based on some given logic, um, electrical, mechanical, a device for carrying data. My answer is E. My answer is E. A device for, um, uh, as an electronic device, a device for storing and processing data, and a device that works based on some given logic. So that's my answer. So um, for number forty-two, for number forty-two, um, bed frame abacus is said to have originated from um, old China in the seventh century. Yes, I think you need to read your chapter one and two. I, I can't remember the history of computer or generation of computers. I can't remember the chapter where you find this. So number forty-three. Um, the first true adding machine was invented by Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal. So, for number 44, um, a German philosopher so, 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 so invented the calculator in number 44 should be 1671. Yes, this should be the answer. E, 1671. <coughs> Sorry, please. For number 45, Edvac. Um, stands for ADVAC. I know I have electronic, I know I have discrete, I know I have variable, and I have computer. So, elaborate, no, elaborate, no, electronic, yes, dual, no, electronic, discrete, value, no. I think the answer is E. The answer should be E. The answer should be E. So, for number 46, um, the analytic and difference engines were number 46 charles babbage charles babbage for number 46 for number 47 um 
for number 47 which of these scientists work on the ENIAC project for number 47 I'll say um, Steve Jobs now Bill Gates now John von Neumann um, Herman Gottstein or the answer is C for number 47 for number 47 the answer is C then for number 48 which of these characterizes first generation computer Number 48, um, they are portable and easy to use, obviously not. Um, they occupy large space and require perpetual human intervention. <laughs> I wonder why perpetual. <laughs> so they occupy large space and have high processing capability. High processing capability, no, obviously. They dissipate a lot of heat and have small circuits with no human intervention, obviously not. They were easily programmable. Nah. So for number 48, my answer will be B. So they occupy large space, yes. They require human intervention. It is totally manual. So you have to perpetual human intervention. The answer for 48 should be B. So number 49, an example of first generation computer. Um, I think this Univac. Univac. I think Univac. Number 49, I'll choose D. Number 50, the first generation computers uses, number 50, they use thermonic valves and wires, yes, thermonic, thermionic, yes, valves and wires, number 50. So, number 51, second generation computers were made in the, number 51, 51, 51 second generation computers were made the answer is b mid 1950 yes the answer is b so number 52 number 52 first generation computer were made in mid 1940 mid 1940 <coughs> sorry please integrated circuits were first used in Third generation, third generation. So this should be C. This should be C. Number fifty-three should be C. So number fifty-four in the third generation computers, MOS. Number fifty-four, MOS stands for metal oxide semiconductors. Yes. Number fifty-four, MOS. So number fifty-five. Number 55, introduction of the microprocessors led to the production of number 55, number 55, um, I'll go with C, yes, fourth generation, fourth generation. So for number 56, generation of computers mostly in use today, 56, uh, <laughs> 56, I think. I go with the fifth generation of computers because normally <laughs> the sixth and the seventh gen are quite expensive now. So majority of the people that use these computers is this. Like a good number of people that can afford the computer normally to the fifth generation they are using. So 56, I go with A. So 57, the central processing unit or processor, main memory, peripheral units, um, I'm sorry, 67, I'll choose D, the hardware components, because <laughs> that's what they are, hardware components. So for the number 58, um, for the number 58, special storage memory used by the control unit are called registers, registers, number 58, registers. So short programs or instructions written by the manufacturer in order to start up the computer system. A software software so number 60 the early form of computer memory which is made up of tiny rings of magnetic materials threaded on wires by hand threaded on wires by hand course yes course course the early form of computer memory which was made up of tiny rings of magnetic materials threaded on wires by hand is called course so for number 61 
which of these is stored in the read only memory in the read only memory um the answer is not people where neither is the software it is not hardware neither is a firmware firmware is the answer 61 61d so for the 62 the difference between semiconductor memory and auxiliary storage devices number 62 um auxiliary storage devices are faster less expensive while this 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 um auxiliary storage um, this is my answer over here semiconductor memory are slower volatile and more expensive while auxiliary storage are just the opposite so for number 63 for number 63 okay one major disadvantage of the cd room and the warm write ones read many for the number 63 information is not easily erasable or written over um, it's not permanent, it's a bridge, it's not easily, the answer is A, 63. 63, the answer is A, information is not easily erasable or written over. So, 63, the answer is A. So, for 64, which of these is not an example of floppy disks? Wow, floppy disks. Floppy disk, um... The answer is D, three quarter inch floppy disk. So the answer is D. There's nothing like a three quarter disk floppy disk, a three quarter inch floppy disk. So for number sixty five, computer software can be divided into two major groups: the system and the application software, obviously. So the system softwares are kind of um, the software the system uses natively application softwares are the one used to extend the system software the functionalities rather of the system so um, system software can be like your operating system and all that application software can be your like I said use it to extend your computer's functionality for example the Microsoft Office suits um, uh, if you are a graphic designer, you are talking in terms of Photoshop. If you are a developer like me, you are not talking about IDEs like Atom, um, VS Code, Visual Studio and all of that. So, those are just the two answers straight away. So, for number... Okay. You don't have any... Other, okay. For number 66. For 66, okay. The set of programs that facilitates the optimal use of hardware of hardware systems and or provides suitable environment for the writing, editing, debugging, testing and running of user programs is um, called system software. Yes. Debugging, testing, running of user programs, writing, editing is system software. So for number 67, the suite of programs acting as an interface between the users of computers and the hardware is called the operating system. The operating system. So for number 68, for number 68, um, the suite of languages that helps in translating programs written in a programming language to their machine language, this should be the suite of softwares. The suite of softwares, this should be softwares that helps in translating programs written in a programming language to their machine language e equivalent. You call them, um, number 68, you call them translators, yes. Um, basically, we have three types of translators. It's still in your book, I think that should be chapter 4, 5, or 6, I can't really remember. So, you have translators, under translators you have um, compilers, you have um, interpreters, you also have um, assemblers. So, interpreters are for interpreted languages like Python, compilers are for compiled languages like um, Java, um, then we have the assemblers that convert assembly language to binary code, I guess. So, just check one of these chapters, you should see it there just came true <coughs> sorry please so um okay we go to number 69 
Example of single user system are the following except one. The answer is E, Windows Server 2003. It's not a single user system. So, number 70. Obviously, if this is not the <laughs> single user system, then this is the multi user system. So, <laughs> So for number 71, which of these user systems is a network user system? So for number 71, a network user system, um, I think the answer is Novel. <coughs> the answer is Novel. Novel is a network user system. So the similarity among assemblers, interpreters, and compilers is that they are all language translators. Finish. <coughs> Sorry, please. I'm having a cough. So, um, use the options below to answer 73 to 80. So, um, 73 dash has ALU, arithmetic logic units, <laughs> and CU as its component. That should be the central processing unit, which is E. For number 74, um, dash is an area within the computer system that holds data to be processed, memory obviously. So the scanner is an example of an input device, number 75. The scanner is an example of an in input device. The magnetic tape, number 76, is an example of a storage device. So number the dot matrix printer is an example of you have seen the printer already so you are talking about outputs so the digital camera the digital camera number 78 number 78 is an example of an input device because you use it to capture data to be used by the computer so um number 79 its speed is measured in gigahertz. Um, number seventy nine. Its gig is measured memory, memory, memory. Memory's gig is measured in gigahertz. So, number eighty. Blu-ray, Blu-ray. Number eighty. I think it's a storage device. The storage device. So number 81, in programming, which of these steps below are involved in a problem solving process? You specify the problem requirements, analyze the problem, design an algorithm that you use to solve your problem. Number 80, not number 81 rather, number 81 should be A, B and C. Number 81 should be A, B and C. So for number eighty two, for number eighty two, um, one, two, three, four. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. Um, ah, I, I can't. I, I can't remember the chapter per se where you have this 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 drawing over here. I can't remember the chapter, but um, just check. Um, eighty two. Number eighty two. Um, 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 I know that I will be maintenance. Well, this one's supposed to be specification. Then my answer is B. For number 82, my answer is B. For number 83, the popular de definition of an algorithm, number 83, as a recipe of the solution to a problem. I think it was Donald Knott, number 83. I think it was Donald, Donald Knott. So the answer to this one is A. For number 84, all of the following are important features of an algorithm. Finiteness, effectiveness, 
definiteness process input number 84 process process is the answer of 84 so number 85 um, i equals to i minus 1 Anywhere you see something like this, i equals to i minus 1, you're only, you're basically reducing the value of i by 1. That is what's happening here. So, basically, um, i equals to i minus 1. i minus 1 goes to i. <laughs> i is equivalent to i minus 1. Some computer science um, OBJ questions. Some of the options can be quite funny. So, for number 85... What will be our answer? Um, mm, I equals to I minus 1. I minus 1 goes to I. I minus 1 is assigned to I. I comes from I minus 1. Um, well, if I'm to choose just one, if I'm to choose just one, then the one I'm going to be choosing would be, um, I I'll choose C. Actually, it's assigned to I. Equals to is an assignment operator. B is the answer. B is the answer. B is the answer. So they look very alike. But if I had the opportunity, I would choose A, C, and B because actually, obviously, I equals to I minus one, and I minus one goes to okay. Let's say A and B, but this is not wrong by the way. So let's just move on. I'll just choose B. So for number eighty-six, the expression x caret three. This caret over here, it should be shift 6 on your keyboard. So the answer is B straight away. So, um, number 86. Number 86. Oh, normally this should be, I think this should be, what am I doing? Um, number 86 is supposed to be X if it were double star now in some programming languages double star is correct so number 86 is supposed to be A the people that type this thing are the ones causing the confusion so this should be X raised to power 3 so the answer should be A for number 86 the number should be A for number 86 but if you take a good look at D as well both of them is X3 X3 so perhaps one of them is supposed to be X cube so in your exam, I'm very sure you won't get a mistake like that. So just choose um, caret basically means you raising to the power of um, the uh, you raising to the power of. So x caret three will be x raised to power three. So one of these two options is supposed to give you x raised to power three. So for number eighty seven, the operator here is not showing. So I don't really know for number eighty seven. <laughs> So if, if it is the equal to operator now, you know that x equals to z. So this is correct. Or you can assign the value of variable z to x if that is equals to sign. So depending on the sign, basically. So the expression a less than b. The expression a less than b. The expression a less than b a is less than b obviously so this should be d so um for these um flow chart symbols um i think this is this should be processing this is input this is um with flow chart symbols Chat symbols. Okay, so this should help. Um, open image. Okay, 
So this one over here, I think it's for input and output, yes, then rectangle is for processing, yes. So this will be the start or the stop. These are the flow arrows. So this is just for page connection, but you might not see something like this in your I think basically everything you need to know about um flow charts. I think is everything is here. Everything you need to know about the flow charts is here. So let's continue. Um let me just keep all these ones. Um so okay. So for number ninety five, just use um this thing I have over here, just try to study it. You'll be able to tackle everything to number ninety five. Yes. So how to declare a variable in Visual Basic, the variable name as data type. Basically, number ninety five is a straight away. So which of the following is a valid basic expression? Which of the following number ninety six is a valid basic expression? um this is wrong this is wrong a equals to two multiplied by 3.14 multiplied by r um rb for number 96 96 i think i'll choose d for 96 because you can see i have r i have b then I have this symbol I know nothing about here. So, okay, number 97. Um, a student gave the solution below as the program to add integers from 1 to 19. I'll solve this problem in another video. All the ones that have to do with calculation, I want to leave them for um, another video. So, um, for number 98, for number 98, um, that is the memory location where data is stored in programming. This is variable. This variable, the memory location where data is stored. Like I used to tell most of my students, um, it's a very, very great misconception to think that variable is what stores the data. No, variable cannot store your data. Variable can only be the name you give to the location where the data is stored. So you understand what I'm saying? It's the name you give to the location where you store data the your data is being stored in memory so normally the memory address is supposed to be something like zero one 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 zero one zero one like that like that but you might not be able to remember the long name like that so instead of having to cram binaries you just look for a fancy name age a fancy name a uh, school a fancy name score a fancy name price give it to it so when you call price, you know your data is there. So the answer to this one is variable, direct. So a dash is a logical and concise list of steps required to solve a problem algorithm. So one of the following is a valid variable name in VB. A valid variable name. Um, a valid variable name is interest rates. Interest rates is a valid variable name. So, um, I'll do this and um, this in another video. Um, each of the following is not an arithmetic operator in Visual Basic 103 um, equals to is not an arithmetic operator equals to is not an arithmetic operator it is an assignment operator so just take note this is the answer over here we have um we have so many type of operators i think if you want to know more about operators um come to this video over here operators in vb so we have um relational operators i explained it in this video then we have um, logical operators, then we have um, arithmetic operators, yes, arithmetic operators. So just um, read through. So this, this, I'm going to be skipping them. Which of the following is the current sequence of steps to start a project in Visual Basic? 
So um, number 106, you click on Start All Programs Visual Basic. I think when this book was written, it was written it was written with Windows 7. So you know you have the start symbol somewhere here. You go to all programs, then after all programs, it will give you all the software you have in, uh, installed on the computer. Then you choose Visual Basic. So uh, A is the answer. If the, it was written with Windows 10 in mind, you know that this you, you click on Windows, it will give you some softwares. Then from there, you work your way up. So the answer is A for 106. So another name for mod that is the modulus function is called integer division, integer remainder. Um, normally, I would say modular division, but number 107, modular division is not available. So the other name that looks like it is integer remainder. So I'll just go with integer remainder. I'll go with integer remainder. Then for 108, um, dash is a word or phrase that is reserved for the exclusive use of Visual Basic, a keyword. A keyword is a reserved word, uh, reserved for use. For example, it is one of the reasons why select, if you come up here, those variable names. It's one of the reasons why select cannot be used because select is a reserved keyword, so you can't use it. So any keyword that have been reserved, dim cannot be used, ask cannot be used, integer cannot be used. Um, we have uh, some few uh, reserved keywords. You can't use any of them as a variable name. You cannot. So um, the answer to this one is keyword. So dash is a numeric or string value that does not change in a program, a constant, a constant. Now evaluate the following, all these ones we have here, I'll just leave it for a later video. Anyone that has to do with calculation, no matter how small it is, I want to leave it to a video, true and true or not false, I'll leave this one too for another video. Another name for comparison operator is relational operator. So comparison, relational, you use them to get the relationship or whatever similarities or differences. Okay, no, similarities and differences is not is not is not the correct word. You can just say uh, use it to find the relationship basically between values. Between values. So 117, 117 um, equals to greater than, less than, greater than or equals to, none of the above is the answer. So which operator is not the class of operators? Um, it's not in the class of operators. Um, okay, 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 this star over here is not in the class of operators. And the class of operators. So all these other ones they are relational operators, but this one is a foreign operator. <laughs> it's an arithmetic operator. So in, in the, um, these four are relational operators. This one is an arithmetic operator. So this is the answer. It's not in the class of the remaining ones. So the following is an example of logical operators. So and only, not only, or only. So logical operators, it should be A, B, and C, 119, A, B, and C. So for 120, dash is used to repeat a sequence of instructions for a particular number of times until the conditions are satisfied. The answer is looping. The answer is looping. Use it to like, a loop is a block of code that is meant to execute continuously till a particular condition is met so the conti the condition that is met might be if one number becomes uh, if you encounter something that um, doesn't satisfy a condition anymore or um, you program it to run a particular number of times so we have two type of loops we have the for loop and the while loop um okay that is for python i think in the visual basic let me see if I can get you the type of loops that we have in Visual Basic. Types of loops. 
and visual basic okay the four next the do while and the while loops so this four next you program the number of times that the loop is supposed to run it will run it but for the do loops and the while loops you add a condition that when this condition is met or when this condition isn't met any isn't satisfied anymore you terminate the loop so um, normally in programming we have two type of loops we have the conditional and the non-conditional loops but this is just me speaking generically. So conditional loops, are, um, non-conditional loops first. These non-conditional loops, you know the total number of times they are going to be running. So you just program it, it will run by itself. So, but for the conditional loops, you don't know the number of times it's supposed to run, but you know what the end result will look like. So you use the end result as a base case for the loop. When the end result is achieved, you terminate the loop. For example, uh, let me give you a generic example of the for loop and the while loop. Um, for the for loop, for the for loop, if you are going to be traveling from Ibadan to Lagos, for example, without go slow, you know that this is going to be taking you 90 minutes. Just keep traveling for 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, you get to Ibadan. You understand? But if you are going to say London for the first time, you don't know how far London is. You have never been there before. So you just keep on traveling. You don't know how many minutes it's going to be taking you, how many hours. But you know what the end result will look like. The end result is you getting to London. When you get to London, you stop traveling. You understand? So you can see the other one. You know the amount of time it's going to be taking you. So you just travel your way. After 90 minutes, you stop. You are at Ibadan, which is your destination. But if you're traveling somewhere say London, you've never been there before, you don't know how far you're supposed to travel. You just keep on traveling till you get where you're going to, then you stop. So you can see that one is conditional, one is non-conditional. So, but that is by the way. So that is used to repeat a sequence of instructions for a particular number of times until a certain condition is or satisfied, the, num the answer is looping. So um, that will be the end of this particular video. So this is the first set of 120. The second video will be the next set. I think the next set are 350 questions. So um, if you have any questions, please, the comment section is open. If you have any um, queries, <laughs> if you feel like some of my answers are wrong, please, I want to learn from you as well. So just drop your comments and I'll, I will attend to them as soon as I can. So thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is our YouTube channel over here, Allogenous Ideas. So we have I have a lot of content here for you that would um, benefit you, um, that will help you in your journey to programming, and more are to come. So um, thank you very much for watching to the end. I remain Allogenous. Um, bye for now. See you in the next video.